Ah, at long last, you're back. I hear you've done much for our people these last few days. Everyone has nothing but praise for you. Many young people have heard the rumors, too. They're all eager to meet our new flame bearer. Well, they won't have to wait for long. It's almost time for the ceremony. We really hope we can resolve the Mountain King situation quickly and smoothly. Seems like a lot of people have been worrying about it, huh? <laughs> well, it's nearly time. So, if you're ready, then follow me to the ceremony site. Here we are. Our honored guests have arrived. I have heard much about your fine work over the past few days. I hope you'll allow us to thank you properly after tonight's ceremony. Don't worry about it. Getting this huge venue ready must have been a huge task. No need to make extra work for yourselves on our account. Oh, if it means getting the Mountain King issue resolved, no cost is too great to bear. A resolution will come in due course but every great fire starts as a tiny spark. We must take it one step at a time. No one would disagree with you if that were possible, Chief, but it's been far too long since we've seen a real step forward. Look around you. Can't you see how our numbers have dwindled since the last turn fire night? The ceremony was arranged on short notice. Many are away from home and could not make it back in time. That may be so, but still. Good evening, Traveler and Paimon. Kamich! Not a moment too soon. Chief Wena, Elder Trinidad, could you give us a minute? I'd like to give the Traveler a few pointers as the previous flame bearer. Uh, very well, but make it quick. Let me know when you're done and we will begin the ceremony. Let's step to the side. Has anyone gone over the key steps of the ceremony with you yet? Yeah, Elder Trinidad did, but, uh... Paimon seems to have forgotten them. What a surprise! The flying ant has an ant-sized brain. If you don't want your tongue to be burned off by the sacred flame tonight, I suggest you stay quiet. <sighs> See those sacred flame pillars? Once you've lit the fire, go light each one up in turn. Once that's done, head down into the cave where the Mountain King slumbers, light the braziers along the way, then bring the flame to the final altar. Then the ceremony is complete. That sounds simple enough. The process isn't complicated, but remember, you mustn't turn back at any point. If you miss a pillar, you can't light the next one, then come back to it. You have to keep moving forward, or it's seen as disrespecting our ancestors. If that happens, you won't receive the blessing of the turn fire, and you'll have to start over. I made you a diagram that summarizes the steps. Take a look. So that's our part. What about you? I'll be with you the whole way. And once you've lit the altar, I'll start summoning the rift. You can leave that side of things to me. Just focus on your part. Okay. We'll try to remember all that and get it right the first time. Ready when you are. But I think I saw Hooney and the others just now. Maybe you should say hi before you start. Might make you less nervous. Just tell the chief when you're ready. doing? Is all in order? I'm counting on you. Don't forget what we talked about. By past fuel and present flame, life marches ever on. My brothers and sisters, the time has come to light the fire once again and let the turn fire night shine bright in Hoitzitlan. Get the sacred flame.
Nicely done. Off to a good start. Great stuff. You're over halfway. Keep it up. Impressive. Just one more to go. Come on, one last push. The final sacred flame pillar is up ahead. Great! All the pillars are alight. Next, it's down into the canyon and head for the Mountain King's cave. Almost there. The cave is just up ahead. The Abyss presence is growing strong. We should deal with the contamination first. There's the altar of the sacred flame. Remember, light up the torches around it first. Kangamato, king of the Yumkasaurs from 500 years ago. He's very powerful. Paimon can tell. He is huge! Let's tread carefully. We don't want to wake him up. You've made it at last. You did even better than I expected. Traveler, now comes the final and most important step of the ceremony. Please use the power of the sacred flame to cleanse the mountain king of abyssal filth. There's no need this time. Hmm? Such strong abyssal power. What is that thing? Kinich, what is the meaning of this? Is that a beastly rift? Chief Wyna, Elder Trinidad. This is about to get a little dangerous. 
You should step back. What do you think you're doing? Solving the Mountain King issue. You mean, by having him torn to pieces by Rift Hounds? No, stop! We can't let that happen! Foolish locusts! Uh, can't you see? We're trying to shove your Locust King into the beastly rift! Uh, but... But... I'm sorry, Chief Wyna and Elder Trinidad. This is the only way. Can you promise me that no harm will come to the Mountain King? I can't guarantee it, but I'm fairly confident. Traveler, this is not what we agreed on! You must cleanse the Mountain King of every last trace of abyssal contamination! Okay, I see what this is. You've been in cahoots this whole time! Ugh, you imbecile! What have you done?! Oh no! The device is destroyed! You forced my hand. I had no choice. Elder Trinidad? Ugh, what are you doing? No! The Mountain King is waking up! He will cause even more casualties! Everyone! Out! Now! <laughs> well, it seems that there is only one way to awaken you all from your willful blindness. More sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Take me, oh Mountain King! Take me as your next sacrifice! Everyone's still outside. We have to keep the Mountain King here. Give me a hand! Watch out for the fruits he's spitting out. I can use those against him. Yeah, that's it! I got him cornered! Present flame. Life marches ever on. Oh, Burkina, I must atone. Patience. We will answer to the fire for all our deeds. Even if one day I fall behind, never look back. Keep moving forward, as we are now.
Live with your guilt and shame. This is the price to pay. Heir to the Turnfire, please use my ruined vessel to train the heroes of the future. The will of Kongamato will march ever on till the abyss is stamped out. day yesterday, huh? Paimon wonders how things are doing now. Let's go ask the chief! Traveler, you've come at just the right time. I have some good news for you. Trinidad's condition is stabilized. He suffered burns on much of his body, but we believe he'll survive. Guess that's the best news we could hope for. I... Uh, Paimon has to ask, is everyone in your tribe such a risk taker? First Kanich, then Elder Trinidad? Is this the scions of the Canopy's adventurous spirit in action? We're simply not afraid to charge ahead into the unknown. He's fine. Don't worry. He's gone to check on the Mountain King. Something most mysterious has happened. After the incident yesterday, a transparent shell has formed around the Mountain King's body. We don't understand the mechanism behind it but the shell appears to insulate him against the influence of abyssal power. It is somewhat akin to a scab, in that it stops the abyssal energy within him from bleeding out, while also preventing further abyssal energy from seeping in and infecting him. We've never seen anything like it. The tribe's most senior elders believe it was caused when he was burned by the sacred flame, similar to the way burned wood becomes charcoal. I think their theory makes sense. After all, we've never thrown the Mountain King directly into the sacred flame before. So it's made a barrier against abyssal energy? That's a, a good thing, right? It's practically a miracle from what we've seen of it so far. It means that the Mountain King's level of abyssal energy is now stable. No longer will we need to perform an annual cleansing ceremony. Wow, that's amazing! I know what you're thinking. The young people in the tribe are already speculating that yesterday's ceremony was a turnfire night like none other in our history. Because you and Kenich, you summoned the very flame that appears in our ancient legends. A great transparent ball of fire. And that fire is what saved the Mountain King. Oh, so that was the real turnfire? <laughs> I may be the chief of this tribe, but I've only ever known the turnfire as a concept in our legends. I cannot answer that question. If anyone can answer it, I suspect it would be the bearer of the Malipo name. He is in the Mountain King's cave as we speak. Ah, so can each then. Why don't we go see how he's doing? Hey yourselves. <laughs> you two doing okay after yesterday? We were gonna ask you the same question. You scared Paimon half to death when you rushed into the fire! Sorry, I couldn't just stand and watch the Mountain King get burned alive. So you thought you'd try and extinguish the sacred flame with Dendro? Or is that an attempt to make the almighty Dragon Lord Kahulahau die of laughter? <sighs> The Sacred Flame only possesses a fraction of the Pyro Archon's power. It's not as if I was fighting the Pyro Archon herself. Kanich, when you went into the flames, were you intending to... uh... Intending to what? To... um... Do the same thing as Burkina. Sacrifice myself? Of course not. My focus was on keeping the Mountain King alive, not on what it would cost. But now I'm curious. What made you think I was going to sacrifice myself? Well, because everyone's saying the Turnfire is what saved the King last night. And Ponche's theory was that summoning the Turnfire is a tit-for-tat exchange, right? So, Paimon thought you decided to pay for it with your life. So you've heard that rumor too. I'm afraid I can't say for sure. 
What happened yesterday was a first for me, too. Well, even if you don't know, there's probably no one in the world who does. What I would say is, if that really was the power of the Turnfire, I'd sooner believe that the Mountain King summoned it himself. The Mountain King? Then, what price did he pay? The core meaning of price is not atonement or compensation, but what you're willing to give up in order to obtain what you want. It's easy to die for your sins. Much harder to live with the guilt and keep on going. In the end, the Mountain King chose the latter option. For Burkina and for the tribe. That's the price he paid. Alright, so how is the Mountain King doing now? Health-wise, there's nothing to worry about. He'll enter a fighting stance whenever we set foot in his territory. But his attacks are gentler now and not as crazed as before. Like he said yesterday, he just intends to be a sparring partner for people to practice with. Yeah, I tried communicating with him again, but he didn't respond. <laughs> we dare say that Locust King has well and truly lost its mind. The lights are on, but nobody is home. Its body remains fighting fit thanks to the perverse power of the Abyss, but time has been less kind to its soul. It was ground to a pulp long ago. But we saw him come back to his senses yesterday. That was merely one last burst of brain activity before it croaked. As you humans would say, it went out with a bang. Oh, come on! Stop being such a doomer. Paimon bets the Mountain King has finally let go of the tragedies of the past now and is focusing on moving forward. That's why he doesn't have time to chat with us. He's too busy thinking about the future. <laughs> well, at least it means my fellow tribes people can move forward now too. Thank you for your help, Traveler. I owe you one. Yeah, that's right. You caught Enjo for us, remember? But he ended up being completely useless. It's not a fair trade if you lost out. Ah, that's on him. It's not your fault he's useless. Besides, we're friends now. You don't know us anything. Friends? <laughs> but your friendship is an even more valuable gift. I can't in good conscience accept it for free. So promise me, if you need anything in the future, you'll come to me. For you, I'll do anything. And only poor little Hooney got the sad ending? Yeah, everyone's happy except me. First Nana, then my dad. Why does everyone in my family have to suffer? Hooney, it'll be okay. Your dad will get better soon. Toba, you're my friend, so I shouldn't say this to your face. But it was all the Mountain King's fault. Huh? Now hold your horses, kiddo. If you promise not to fight, Uncle Sanko will tell you a story. Okay, before you roll your eyes out of your skull, I promise you can trust me. I almost got my eyebrows burned off by the turnfire after last time. That's why I came back to make it up to you. All right, I'll just get to the point. Do you know what Uncle Sanka loves the most about your people? Uh, what? Your extreme sports. Huh? On my first day here, I got hit by someone falling out of the sky. I believe you call it bungee jumping? It's a dangerous sport to be sure, but the courage it took to make the jump impressed the heck out of me. So I introduced myself to the jumper, we made friends, and I even helped treat her wounds. Oh, such a nice friend. Of course. Anyway, the good times didn't last, because I got captured by a powerful foe, so we had to part ways for a while. In the hands of the enemy, I was scorned, scolded, and nearly given away as a gift. Oh, it was so humiliating. A horrible experience to look back on. Why does Uncle Sanka always have to suffer, I thought. So I feel your pain, Huni. I was in the same position. But in the end, I made it through, and I left all of those painful memories in the past. I even managed to reunite with my friend. Uh, is that it? Um, 
moral of the story is to look forward in life, right? Yeah, we've heard that one millions of times. Sorry, Uncle Sanka, but you're not cut out to be a teacher. Very smart, Huni, but not quite smart enough. What I'm trying to tell you is that after I reunited with my friend, I found her injuries were all healed, but she really missed her family. So, I thought you might like to see her too. She's right behind you. Turn around and see. Another trick about not turning back? I'm not falling for that one again. Huh? Thank you. 